Remnants is a series of science fiction books written by K. A. Applegate between July 2001 and September 2003. It is the story of what happens to the survivors of a desperate mission to save a handful of human beings after an asteroid collides with the Earth. Eighty people are placed aboard a converted space shuttle using untested, quack, hibernation technology and fired blindly into space hours before all life on Earth is obliterated by a large asteroid called the Rock. They are then picked up by a large, sentient spacecraft of monumental proportions known as Mother, which is inhabited by various races. Mother can manipulate the physical environment within the craft's limits and often does so. Only a few people placed in stasis actually were alive and capable of being reanimated when they reached Mother. Topic. Characters Topic. Main characters Jobs, he and his parents and brother are on the Mayflower, only Jobs and his brother survive. Jobs' poetic sense and technical knowledge combined are often useful in understanding Mother, a sentient machine. It is Jobs who discovers the remains of Earth. He chose to use the name Jobs because unlike Bill Gates or Michael Dell, Stephen Jobs created a miniature revolution. In his garage. Jobs' birth name is Sebastian Andreessen. He was the son of a prominent scientist, Jennifer Andreessen, head of astrophysics at Stanford, and Tony Andreessen, a software technician with the kind of job where nobody expects you to show up on time, or at all, and was recruited to go on the Mayflower Project. He was joined by his longtime best friend Mo Steele. He was briefly romantically involved with a girl named Cordelia before he went aboard the Mayflower Project, and the first book of Remnants deals with his longing for her to accompany him on the ship. Cordelia instead comes to an infamous death when her video link reveals to the world a chunk of the rock obliterating San Francisco and its inhabitants, with the resulting shockwave shattering the building from which Cordelia witnesses the destruction. Mo Steel, Job's best friend, Mo Steel is named for either Man of Steel or More Steel. Mo cannot remember which, since he has broken five of his bones. Four of them so were broken so badly, they had been replaced with titanium composites. Mo Steel has a love for adventure and is proud of all his broken bones and scars. Mo marries Noise in the series epilogue, and has one son Boyd, and Noise is pregnant with another. Mo Steel's birth name is Romeo Gonzalez. Mo Steel is possibly an idiot savant, however, evidence can only be found in the second book when he converts an insane number of minutes into years. Two-Face, named after the comic book villain, Two-Face. She is one of two players battling for total control of the remnants. Two-Face seems to show feelings for Billy, but upon being stranded on Earth, she becomes paranoid to the point that she is sure Billy orchestrated the entire event. She attempts to kill Billy to stop the re-greening ritual, and Billy is forced to kill her to protect himself, but not before he gives her a vision of her dead mother so that she may die peacefully. It is hinted several times through the series that Two-Face herself caused the fire that scarred her, but this is not confirmed. Yago, the son of the first African-American, and first female president of the United States, Janice Castleman, Yago is Two-Face's competition for control. He is highly arrogant and is assured he will eventually rise to power, caring for his own safety above all else. About halfway through the series, Yago is connected to Mother and is killed. Actually, a projection of his mind is killed. The ordeal leaves Yago believing himself to be the one, a being of purity, destined to lead the chosen, the non-mutant remnants, and to destroy the freaks, Two-Face and the mutated remnants. Yago's twisted religion turns many blue meanies with his newly discovered mutation, the touch, a sort of laying on hands that several meanies crave, although it is not known exactly what the touch really does, only that it does not work on humans. Near the end of his life Yago becomes much more likable and not arrogant. Yago dies when his mind, inside of tape, fades away. Yago's birth name is Robert Castleman. Violet Blake, Violet is a Jane, named for Jane Austen, who for the first half of the series, prefers to be called Miss Blake. As a Jane, Violet has a distaste for technology, and a love for all forms of art and literature. Violet suffers an attack of worms in the second book, and eventually they become her mutation, enabling her to become a mass of worms that can revive the dead, to an extent. Violet and Jobs have a semi-romantic relationship, but her disgust over her mutation, and Jobs' obsession with Earth, drive them apart. She marries the marauder Sanchez in the end of the book. Violet's birth name is Dallas, the place of her birth. Billy Weir. Billy is a true enigma. Originally a Chechen orphan, Billy was adopted by a Texan family. He was born Russian, but his father, Billy Weir Sr., a.k.a. Big Bill, changed his name to Billy. 
At times it seems that Billy has infinite power, and has a strong connection with Mother. Early in the series he was carried around the computer-generated world by Jobs thereby fusing friendship with Jobs that is persistent throughout the series. Long before the Mayflower, Billy dreamt of events that would unfold over five centuries later. While in hibernation, Billy did not sleep, and was awake for the 500-year journey. The ordeal twisted his mind, giving him telekinesis, the power to levitate, and many other strange abilities. In the fourth book, he moves Wilson Lefkowitz Blake's dead body like an oversized marionette, freaking most deal out big time. These abilities make Billy a match for Mother, to the point where they assimilate to become one. Billy dies in the re-greening ritual, it is possible he may have survived, but two faces attack and the subsequent energy Billy spends to drain her life force may have contributed to his death. He is dubbed, Billy Weird, by many of his enemies, which amounts to anyone seeking control of the ship. Tate, Tate is one of the teenage survivors of the Mayflower. She is a relatively unimportant character until the seventh book, and most of the thirteenth book is about her. Tate developed a mutation called, The Mouth which causes her head to grow to a monstrous size when she feels threatened, and accidentally eats Yago, Charlie, and Amelia, who continue to live inside Tate until she dies or they die a natural death. In the earlier books Tate shows feelings for Mosteel and tells him that he's holding the remnants together. Tamara Hoyle, a Marine who was not intended to board the Mayflower shuttle, she was trapped on board when the ship launched, and she was given the birth of a passenger who had been killed before boarding the ship. Tamara was pregnant when she was placed in her berth, and is rejuvenated with the baby Tay at her side. For the first part of the series she is mind-controlled by Tay. After Tay is defeated, Tamara takes a keen interest in the defense of the remnants. She is killed by Blue Meanies on the trip back to Earth. The Troika, Amelia, Duncan Choate, and Charlie Langlow, are a trio of humans living in what is called the Basement, a dark area that is very much what it sounds, an area below Mother's main deck. All of them ascend to become slime-like shapeshifters. Amelia and Charlie are assimilated into Tate, and Duncan is killed. Decaf, Decaf wasn't supposed to be on the Mayflower. But he and his brother, Mark, stowed away on board the ship. Mark attacked Tamara and was killed by her. Jobs, who wasn't in his hibernation booth yet, heard the commotion and subdued Decaf, but not before Decaf shot one of the two pilots. Ultimately, Decaf was given the spot. When the surviving remnants woke up, Decaf ended up hanging out with Yago because no one else liked him. He spends the majority of the series following Yago and Animal. When the Blue Meanies attacked, Decaf was killed and given Violet's worm mutation. Along with the remaining remnants, except Tate, he was abandoned by Yago. Although he's not mentioned in the epilogue, Decaf survived and lived to see the new Earth. Kubrick, the 15-year-old son of one of the Mayflower's engineers, Kubrick was skinned by Mother to look more like her creators. He is introduced in the fifth book, where he and his father find Billy and Mosteel in the basement. In the series, he shows definite feelings for Two-Face. He is killed in the ninth book by Charlie saving Two-Face's life. Echo, an alpha colony inhabitant, Echo is not genetically pure, and this shows in her blind baby. She is forced to flee the alpha colony and seek refuge with the marauders. Her child, Lumina, becomes one of three elements in the re-greening of Earth, Sanchez. Sanchez is the marauder who was granted visions by the source, which is later revealed to be Mother. After the remnants and marauders win against the savages, Sanchez receives a call from Mother telling the humans to come to the source. Through Billy, Sanchez saw what elements were needed to perform the ritual that would restore Earth. Noise, born Jessica Polk, Noise, the daughter of a novelist and an orthopedic surgeon, was mostly deaf until age 12, then received surgery that restored her hearing to its full capacity. Noise and Dr. Cohen were abandoned on the ship by the other remnants and kidnapped by Blue Meanies. Noise is the only remnant who can communicate with the Blue Meanies. Newton, Hawke's brother, the former leader of the Marauders after he's killed by Mosteel. Right from the start, Newton plotted to kill Mosteel and become leader himself. He tried to have Decaf poisoned by Balder and Olga to be killed by Rattler, both of which fail. Then his attempt to kill Mosteel was foiled by Edward. After Newton failed to steal Lumina, Newton fled, his ultimate fate is never revealed. Tay, initially called, the baby. Tay appears first as the young child of Tamara Hoyle, who was born on the 500-year journey. After some time, however, it becomes clear that the baby is not human, and is furthermore controlling Tamara's mind. After absorbing the energy of several blue meanies, Tay transforms into a shipwright and attempts to seize control of Mother. However, Billy defeats him by joining with Mother. Tay is notably the only shipwright to appear. 
mother, both a computer and a ship, mother is so highly advanced that she is self-aware, or at least is able to give the impression that she is, and experiences loneliness after her creators, the shipwrights, abandoned her and left her alone for a 600 years. The long years alone in space have damaged her system, she must have maintenance every 200 cycles, and has been alone for 600 although it is not specified exactly how long a cycle is. The long years of no new input drove Mother mad, and when the Mayflower is found, she eagerly awakes the remnants to absorb new information. Mother eventually merges with Billy. When Billy and she are disconnected, she suffers a computer virus from the Troika, and is degraded into Daughter, a simplified form of herself. Mother the ship crashes on Earth, and becomes known as the source to the Marauders. Other characters Mark Melman – Mark was Decaf's older brother and foster father. The two of them weren't supposed to be on the Mayflower, but they stowed away in some spacesuits. Mark attacked and wounded Tamara but was killed by her before she lost consciousness. Jasper Willett – Colonel Jasper Willett was the Mayflower commander. When one of the Mayflower's solar sails is damaged, Willett talks Jobs and Mosteel how to fix it. But shortly afterward, he used the gun Decaf had used earlier to kill himself, presumably because he couldn't live without his family. When Jobs, Mo Steel and Two-Face woke up on Mother, they found Willett's skeleton. Connie Werter – Dr. Connie Werter was one of the Mayflower passengers who survived hibernation. Before departing, Connie offered to let Tamara take her place on the Mayflower to give her baby a chance at life. Tamara was pregnant at the time. Shortly after waking up, Jobs found Tamara with her baby, and the umbilical cord still attached. Connie died when the baby attacked her in her attempt to cut the cord. Errol Smith – Errol was one of the Mayflower passengers who survived hibernation. He was one of the rocket scientists who put the Mayflower together. He was one of the first of the remnants to suggest that they'd somehow been captured as there were no signs of re-entry damage. But shortly afterward, the remnants were attacked by the riders, who challenged Errol to a duel and killed him. William. Big Bill. Weir, Big Bill was Billy's adopted father. He woke up from his birth with T.R., Big Bill being infested with worms at the time. When Jobs, Violet and Mosteel tried to save him, one of the worms escaped and got into Violet's finger, prompting Jobs and Mosteel to cut off her finger. Ultimately Billy killed Big Bill to save him from a slow death. Big Bill reappears as projection to the remnants as a projection by Billy while he spoke with Mother. Shai Hwang, Shai Hwang was Two-Face's father. Before the rock hit, Shai was an ABC producer in Miami who blackmailed the Mayflower Project to get his family places on board and a chance at life. After Shai found his wife dead, he remained depressed for the rest of his time on board Mother. Shai was finally killed by a blue meanie aboard the Constitution. Wilson Lefkowitz Blake, Wilson was the CEO of Microsoft who survived hibernation aboard the Mayflower. Yago appointed her leader of the remnants, he intended to usurp her later. When Tamara demanded a sacrifice for the baby, Two-Face arranged with Yago for Wilson to be fed. Wilson was saved when the node was destroyed and their current environment replaced to its default setting. During the battle on the Constitution, a massive wave threw her overboard. Mosteel had jumped into the water to save her and Billy, who had been thrown into the water by Tamara. Mosteel managed to reach Billy but was too late to help Wilson. Alberto de Salvo. Alberto was one of the scientists who designed the Mayflower's solar sails. He and his son, Kubrick, woke up earlier and fell back asleep. Alberto would wake up to find his son mutated by mother. The two met up with Mosteel and Billy and found one of the chairs that interfaced with Mother. Alberto sat in the chair and got his brain scrambled. Shortly afterward, Mother would kill Alberto in the Blue Meanie's base. T.R. Tathagata. T.R. Rajagopalchari was one of the survivors aboard the Mayflower. He woke along with an worm-infested Big Bill. T.R. was silent for the majority of his part with the remnants. When Billy enforced the Big Compromise, T.R. had him make a helicopter for him. T.R. was killed by Blue Meanings who were searching for Yago. Their fired missed Edward and hit him. T.R. was the first of the remnants to be honored with a proper burial. Angelique Cohen. Dr. Cohen was one of survivors on board the Mayflower. She was kidnapped by the Blue Meanies along with Noise. Throughout her part in the series, Dr. Cohen was obsessed with finding her husband, Alan Carrington. When Noise set off to negotiate with the Blue Meanies, they attacked them and placed a device on Dr. Cohen that looked into her memories and drove her insane. Dr. Cohen was later killed by the Blue Meanies in the attack that followed. Daniel Burroway. Burroway was one of the survivors on board the Mayflower who lost his entire family. He constantly fought among the other remnants and respected no one except Wilson. Burroway was the remnants' first casualty when they landed on Earth. 
he was killed by a pillar of flame. Animal Animal was one of the younger survivors on board the Mayflower. Yago recruited Animal as his bodyguard. Animal spent most of the series following Yago, though he secretly thought he was nuts. Yago would abandon Animal along with the other remaining remnants on Earth with the Riders and Blue Meanies. Animal provoked a fight and killed two of the Meanies. He then isolated himself from the others and was able to make a fire. But he was ultimately accidentally devoured by Decaf, who was just trying to scare him, in his worm form. Roger Dodger Roger Dodger was one of the younger survivors aboard the Mayflower. He wasn't very important until he accompanied Tate and Decaf on several rider boards. He grew very bored of living quietly with Tate and Tamara when Billy enforced the big compromise. He snuck into the Violet's house and killed himself while playing with a rider boomerang. Violet brought him back to life in using her concealed mutation. Olga, Mostil's mother, who tries to keep Mostil from danger without much success, though she's used to his dangerous antics. Olga made it her business to take care of the remnants whenever one of them was injured. She befriended the Marauder, Arga, and the two lived together in the New Earth for a time before Arga died. Edward, Jobs's six-year-old brother who gains the power to blend into his surrounding environment until he's practically invisible. When Wilson abandons Violet, Jobs asks Two-Face to look after Edward. Edward's power proves very useful when he stops Newton from killing Mostil. Edward was one of the few to survive to see the New Earth. Topic. List of humans During the escape from Earth, 80 humans were on board the Mayflower. However, some diverged into other species. Of the 80 that set out, only 8 survived. 22 died on board the Mayflower, one was killed before the Mayflower set off, the two pilots were killed before the hibernation happened, and 27 died of other causes. List of marauders Topic. List of alphas There are 40 alphas, this list is incomplete. Topic. List of books The following books are in the series The Mayflower Project July 2001. Destination Unknown September 2001. The November 2001. Nowhere Land, January 2002. Mutation, March 2002. Breakdown, May 2002. Isolation, July 2002. Mother, May I? September 2002. No Place Like Home, November 2002. Lost and Found, January 2003. Dream Storm, March 2003. Aftermath, May 2003. Survival July 2003 Begin again September 2003 Topic Plots The Mayflower Project at the start of the first book Jobs learns of a 76 mile long asteroid on a collision course with Earth His parents then tell him of a project of 80 people being shipped off into a shuttle with solar sails and hibernation booths Jobs, along with his best friend Mostil, attempt to give a place to Jobs's crush Cordelia, but learn from her father that she's away in San Francisco. Cordelia later dies when a small piece of the asteroid breaks off and destroys San Francisco. Jobs, Mostil and their parents all get shipped off to the Mayflower along with the rest of the 80, who are being pursued by a mob who wants to destroy the Mayflower, as well a pair of brothers named Mark and Harlan. Decaf. Melman, the former of which intends to kill the Mayflower's crew to give him and his brother places on the Mayflower. Shortly before boarding the Mayflower, a gunman kills one of the 80 and the Mayflower takes off with Mark and D. Caff, who have stowed away in spaces suits, and unbeknownst to anyone, a pregnant Marine sergeant, Tamara Hoyle. Mark attacks Tamara, but is ultimately killed by her. Jobs hears the commotion and subdues D. Caff, but not before D. Caff accidentally shoots one of the pilots. The Mayflower commander, Colonel Willett realizes that a solo sail has been damaged. While he places Tamara and Decaf into hibernation booths, Jobs revives Mostil, and the pair of them repair the sail moments before the asteroid hits Earth. The book ends with Jobs and Mostil returning to their berths, but Colonel Willett takes Mark's gun and shoots himself, and everyone falls asleep, all except for an orphan boy named Billy Weir. Destination unknown, Jobs wakes up from hibernation, along with Mostil and a girl named Two-Face, and the three of them discover that not everyone has survived, including both Jobs's parents, Mostil's dad and Two-Face's mum. 
Slowly but surely other members of the 80 wake up, including Billy, a girl named Violet Blake and her mother Wilson, the president's son Yago, Mo Steele's mother, Two Faces' dad Shai Hawang, Jobs's brother Edward and others. They soon realize that there's no sign of re-entry damage, their environment looks like two famous paintings and two of the wakers are killed, Connie Huerta by Tamara's baby and Errol Smith at the hands of a hoverboard riding alien later named Riders. Other members of the 80 emerge, including, D. Caff, a boy named Roger Dodger, a boy named Animal, a girl named Tate a man named Burroway. Two others include T.R. and Big Bill Weir, Billy's adopted father. The remnants learn that Big Bill is infested with worms. When Violet attempts to save him, one worm gets in her finger, prompting Jobs to cut off her finger and Wilson to abandon her. Big Bill is also killed by Billy, who then blacks out. Jobs, Mo Steele and his mother, Olga stay with Violet and witness another group of aliens entering the environment, which Jobs now realizes is a colossal ship. Them, while Jobs's group stays with Violet, the main group of remnants have found a replica of the Tower of Babel and are attacked by a group of riders. Tamara battles one of the riders and strangely manages to kill it. When Wilson remarks on it, Tamara replies, Everything dies, human. Meanwhile, Jobs and the others get frequently attacked by strange demons that Violet identifies as Bosch's final judgment. Along the way, they encounter one of the aliens they saw entering the ship, Mosteel had called them Blue Meanies. They attempt to communicate with the Meanie with difficulty, but with help from Billy, they manage to get out of him that his name is Four Sacred Streams and that Mother is confused, which Jobs assumes is the ship, and that a node must be destroyed, which is creating the environments. Back with the others, Two-Face attempts to leave with Edward, having been discriminated by Yago as a freak. She returns to the others and gets attacked by the other remnants, who decided to feed Two-Face to Tamara's baby in order for Tamara to protect them from the riders, so Two-Face bribes Yago so that Wilson will be sacrificed. But the baby doesn't get to eat anyone when Four Sacred Streams destroys the node at the cost of his own life, saving the lives of Jobs's group, but trapping the other remnants in Mother's default setting, the riders' home territory. Nowhere land, Jobs and his group reunite with their fellow remnants, who have barely escaped an attack from the riders. They find a large creature, that they call a blimp, swimming through the new environment, a copper-colored sea with small islands dotted around it. Using a rider boomerang provided by Decaf, Mosteel manages to get a hold on the blimp and help the other remnants onto the blimp. Wilson then berates Yago in his attempt to sacrifice her to Tamara's baby and attempts to replace him with Jobs as her new representative for the younger remnants. Two-Face intervenes, claiming that survival is more important. The following day, they're attacked by the riders again. Billy tries to keep the blimp moving and several of the remnants are lucky enough to kill some of the riders, but they just keep coming. The remnants hide inside the blimp itself and escape the riders but shortly after they leave, the blimp dies. They swim to one of the islands and spot another one of Mother's replicas, the USS Constitution, which they commandeer. Later on, they spot a statue infested with blue meanies, who are battling squid-like creatures. Having heard of four sacred streams from Jobs, the remnants attempt to make the Meanies their allies by firing the Constitution's cannons at the statue. Instead, the Blue Meanies angrily return fire on the remnants, killing Shai Hwang. In the confusion as the remnants go below decks, Billy is thrown overboard by Tamara and Wilson is also thrown off by a massive wave. Mosteel notices the commotion and attempts to save them. Billy manages to take them to safety, but Wilson has drowned. The other remnants meanwhile are now surrounded by blue meanies, completely defenseless. Mutation, Mo Steele and Billy encounter two of the remnants that they accidentally left behind when they encountered the worms, Alberto de Zalvo and his son Kerbic, who has had his skin and nerves surgically removed by Mother. They group together and find a chair linked to Mother, which Alberto sits in, resulting with his mind being scrambled. Meanwhile, the Blue Meanies, who had surrounded the remnants in the previous book, retreat when Mother creates three ships to attack them and end up attacking the USS. Constitution. The remnants are saved when Mosteel is made a giant by Billy and destroys the ships. Billy then decides to sit the chair and the remnants find themselves in a new environment, Billy's thoughts. Mosteel, Alberto and Kubrick meet up with the rest of the remnants in a McDonald's, where they are attacked by an army of female warriors, presumably from a comic book Billy read as a kid. They barely manage to escape when they're attacked by riders and squids in a replica of Billy's old school. They escape again when the environment changes to Edward Hopper's Nighthawks. Here they meet an image of Big Bill, created by Billy to communicate with the other remnants while he interfaces with Mother, who is experiencing sadness from being abandoned by her creators, the shipwrights. Mother had mutated Kubrick to look more like the shipwrights. Breakdown. Two other remnants, Noise and Dr. Cohen have been captured from the Blue Meanies, who are deciding what to do about the humans. Unbeknownst to them, Noise, who had been deaf for part of her life, understands the sign language of the Meanies. 
Meanwhile, Mother offers the other remnants to help her destroy the Blue Meanies, to which Yago willingly volunteers for. He then ends up in one of the chairs and the environment changes to an alternate version of the White House, where Mother provides Yago with a computer-generated army from the Civil War. While Jobs, Violet and Two-Face follow Yago to the Blue Meanie base, Mo Steel and Kubrick meet up with Billy and find Yago in one of the chairs linked to Mother. Meanwhile, Yago's strike force is decimated by the Blue Meanies and Jobs notices Tamara's baby absorb one of the Blue Meanies. Kubrick is then able to remove Yago from the chair and place his father into it, but Mother kills him and Billy sends himself, Mo Steel and Kubrick to the battlefield. With the battle over, Two-Face accuses Tamara's baby of being a shipwright and divides the remnants into factions to either follow her or the baby. Jobs, Mo Steel, Violet, Kubrick, Noise, Olga and Dr. Cohen join Two-Face while the rest join the baby. The two groups depart, each with the same destination in mind, the Bridge of Mother. Isolation. Two-Face's group is heading for the Bridge of Mother, but Tamara is taking a different course. Tamara meets with the riders and participates in the Rule of Nine, where she must duel nine riders to the death at once. Tamara kills the first eight and kills the last one with some slight intervention by Tate. Tamara gains control of the riders to destroy the Blue Meanies in the baby's name and gain control of Mother. Tate returns to the others and reports her findings to the other remnants. Tate had come with Yago's group only to protect Tamara, realizing that the baby was controlling her. She then decides to alert Jobs and Two-Face of the danger. Along with Roger Dodger and D. Caff, who decided he wanted a break from Yago, they steal some rider hoverboards and alert the other remnants, who have just avoided an attack from squids, which Billy had indicated were automatons. Tamara arrives with the riders and attack the Blue Meanies, who have gathered at the bridge. During the battle, the baby absorbs several dead blue meanies and takes on the true form of a shipwright and ascends to the bridge with Tamara, closely followed by Billy, Jobs, Mosteel, and Tate. Billy duels the shipwright while at the same time uses his mind to have Mosteel duel Tamara. Ultimately, Billy destroys the shipwright when Mother intervenes in his favor, freeing Tamara in the process. He then leaves the bridge with Jobs and Mosteel Tate decided to stay with Tamara and forcefully ends the battle, angering Yago, who vows to destroy Billy. Mother, may I? Billy has enforced the big compromise. The aliens are to not attack the remnants and in exchange the remnants won't alter Mother's course. Three months later, while exploring Mother's lab, Jobs finds what he believes may be what's left of Earth. Knowing it will break the big compromise, he consults Billy, who says he can make Mother return to Earth if the remnants so choose, and asks Jobs to search Mother's basement, because Billy can't sense anything in there. While Jobs takes Mosteel, Kubrick, Tate, Animal, Yago, and Tamara to the basement with him, some Blue Meanies attack Violet in her Greek villa and interrogate her about Yago's whereabouts, claiming that he'd been given a custom Blue Meanie weapon and deviating their fellows into turning against them, which attracts Two-Face, Edward, and T.R. A small fight commences in which one of the Blue Meanies kills T.R. in an attempt to kill Edward. Violet, infuriated by this senseless act, changes her mind on her opposition of returning to Earth. Meanwhile, Jobses and his group are attacked by other Blue Meanies searching for Yago. Some are killed by Yago's new weapon but the last one is absorbed by Amelia, one of the missing 80 that vanished from their births on the Mayflower. She instructs Jobs to tell Billy not to alter Mother's course. However, Billy alters Mother's course before he and the others can deliver the message. No place like home, the remnants are preparing for an inevitable battle with the Blue Meanies, and possibly the Riders. To protect them, Billy constructs a massive wall that only the remnants can open from the inside. Noise proposes attempting to negotiate with the aliens but Two-Face argues against it. Yago meanwhile, is recruiting Blue Meanies who tell him that their brethren are preparing for a raid to test the remnants' defenses. But late one night, Noise and Dr. Cohen sneak out to attempt to negotiate with the aliens. They encounter a Blue Meanie that knocks them out and places a device onto Dr. Cohen that allows it to see into her memories and gather all the information it needs for its fellows to attack the remnants. The device also badly damages Dr. Cohen's mind. Meanwhile, a man named Charlie is spotted and brought into the remnants' territory. Olga and Violet restore him to health and noise returns with Dr. Cohen. The next day, the remnants hold their own against a rider attack but their defenses are decimated by the Blue Meanies. In the battle, it's revealed that Charlie is one of Amelia's two partners sent to kill Billy. He ends up attacking Two-Face instead, causing an infuriated Kubrick to attack him. d -Caf is also killed in battle but Violet uses her newly revealed mutation to bring him back to life. She had the power to turn into a swarm of worms ever since waking up and had used it earlier to bring Roger Dodger back to life after he accidentally killed himself playing with a rider boomerang. When asked if she's still human, she replies, Are any of us? Lost and found, Kubrick and Dr. Cohen are listed as dead at the start of this book and Charlie has returned to Amelia and his other partner, Duncan. 
Grieved by Kubrick's death, Two-Face decides she wants Violet's mutation so she can help her fellow remnants. When Violet refuses, Two-Face deliberately kills herself so Violet will give her the mutation. Violet refused because she had failed to save Tamara after she'd been killed by the Blue Meanies. Tate discovers she has a mutation as well when she spots Yago breaking curfew and her mouth grows big and bites him. Yago is saved only by intervention from Jobs. They arrive on Earth and find that it's nothing but a wasteland with no water and pillars of flames, one of which kills Burroway. Yago meets with the Troika the name Billy gave Amelia's group and makes a deal with them to abandon Billy on Earth and leave on Mother with him. He then sends his last blue meanie to spy on Jobs. The next morning, Jobs finds his newly planted tomato seed sprouting. As all the remnants and Billy all gather around it, Yago takes off on Mother with the Troika, and unintentionally, Tate. The remnants are left on the barren earth along with four blue meanies and a pair of riders. And unbeknownst to anyone, a girl named Echo has observed everything from an unnoticed view deck. Dreamstorm, having been abandoned on earth by Yago and the Troika, Animal starts a fight with the blue meanies and riders, killing two of the meanies and prompting the other aliens to retreat. Billy, now disconnected from Mother, falls into a coma. Echo is now formally introduced as being an alpha, part of a human colony who survived the rock, who strongly believe in genetic perfection and decided to allow the remnants to die. Another group, known as the Marauders, live out in the wild and their leader, Hawk, kills the alpha leader, Woody, and forcefully takes more than the Marauders' fair share of food. Meanwhile, Jobs and Mosteel take the suits from the dead blue meanies to explore the area. While they're away, Decaf accidentally eats Animal when he loses control of the worms in his body. Jobs and Mosteel also get caught in a violent storm that makes them see things that can't possibly be real. Jobs sees San Francisco and Mosteel sees his grandmother making bread. They return to the others and Edward reports that he'd seen some people nearby, who are some of the marauders. Edward leads the remnants to where he spotted them, and they stumble into the Alpha's home where Hawk and some of the marauders attack them. Mosteel kills Hawk with a rider boomerang he and the other remnants are taken to separate rooms. Mosteel wakes up and a marauder woman named Aga says he is the new leader of the marauders. When Mosteel asks to see the others, he finds that Billy is missing from the group. Aftermath, Mosteel must now prove himself worthy of being leader of the marauders by killing a beast. He, along with the remnants and marauders, depart from the Alpha Colony. Hawk's brother, Newton, is angry that Mosteel become leader as he had intended to become leader himself. He then plots the best ways to usurp Mosteel. During the journey, Mosteel learns that some of the marauders are mutated humans rejected by the Alphas. Some of them, like Badger and Cocker, are decent people, and Olga befriends Aga. The marauders also have a shaman among them named Sanchez, to whom Violet is attracted to. If any person created by the Alphas had any sort of disability, they were rejected and sent to live with the marauders. They soon arrive in the Twilight Zone of Earth and the marauders warn the remnants of the slizzers, which turn out to be mutated cockroaches, one of which steals and devours the child Taki. Newton makes several attempts to take revenge on Mosteel. First he has Rattler attack Olga, but is killed by Mosteel. Two-Face also sees the marauders passing around a bag full of pellets and warns the others not to eat them. But when Mosteel refuses to marry Grost, Newton has Balder attempt to poison Decaf, but Aga helps him recover. They now arrive at the lair of the beasts, where Mosteel learns are mutated rats. Mosteel kills the leader as instructed and Newton attempts to kill him but is foiled by Edward. No sooner does Mosteel berate Newton, than they're all attacked by savages, a group of marauders who turned against their fellows, and have allied themselves with the two riders. Survival, while the rest of the remnants are trapped on Earth, Tate is trapped on Mother with Yago and the Troika. After gathering all the blue meanies and riders for the Troika to devour, Yago attempts to feed Tate to the Troika. But Tate's new mutation, the mouth, overcomes her and she eats Yago, whose consciousness is still alive in Tate's mind. Tate then falls asleep and sees a vision of the earth green again and even saw someone she knew to be Jobs' daughter. She then wakes up and finds one of the chairs interfaced with Mother and sits in it. She learns that Mother is feeling terrible pain because Billy is no longer with her and displays feelings to Tate by taking memories out of Tate's own mind. The Troika now emerge from cocoons and Amelia deliberately gets eaten by Tate while Duncan plants a virus into Mother, reducing her to a simple computer called Daughter. Tate also eats Charlie and has dreams of Billy merging with Mother on Earth people living on a green Earth. She along with Yago, Amelia and Charlie take control of Daughter and use her to launch Duncan into the vacuum of space. Charlie later takes over Tate's body but is killed when Tate, Yago and Amelia drive him insane and causes him to fade away. Tate, Yago and Amelia spend 60 years of peace traveling the stars trying to find new forms of life. When Yago requests to Tate that they return to Earth, Tate refuses, unwilling to return to what's left of Earth. 
Tate wakes up the next day and learns from Amelia that Yago has died of old age. Feeling responsible for Yago, Tate and Amelia come up with a plan to undo the damage of the rock. Traveling through time and space Tate orders a rehabilitated mother to crash into Asia where the remnants originally landed, killing her and Amelia on impact. Begin again, the remnants and marauders emerge victorious against the savages, killing the two riders and sustaining no casualties of their own. After the battle, Sanchez informs them that he can hear the source calling to them. Mostil sends Cocker to the Alpha Colony but they refuse to come. Echo, who had volunteered some of DNA to make a new human is found out to be blind, and so the Alphas imprison Echo and her baby intending to leave them to die. Lyric, Maddox and Echo's mentor, Westy help Echo and her baby escape but Westy chooses to stay in the colony and instructs the others to leave her. They meet Cocker who takes them to the source with the others. The source is none other than Mother. Jobs, Mostil, Violet, Two-Face, Matic, Newton and Sanchez enter Mother and find Tate's skeleton and a recording she took before crashing on Earth telling the remnants that all they need is love and to listen to Billy, who has merged with Mother. Sanchez then has a vision of a green Earth. They return from Mother and inform the others. Newton doesn't believe that this green world is possible and intends to keep it from coming to pass. Sanchez stays inside Mother and learns from Billy that three elements are needed for a ritual to make Earth green, Mother, the five, who were the other missing five besides the Troika, and Echo's child, who Jobs had named Lumina. Newton attempts to steal Lumina, but is foiled by the remnants, prompting him to flee. Two-Face, convinced that Billy is setting them up to fail attempts to kill Billy, resulting with Billy killing her but giving her a vision of her mother to die peacefully. Echo then willingly agrees to risk her baby's life and gives her to Billy. In the epilogue, the ritual has succeeded but Two-Face's attack made Billy unable to survive the regreening. Jobs has married Echo and have named their next daughter after Tate, Mostil has married Noise, who have one child and another on the way, Matic and Lyric have married and Violet marries Sanchez. They have searched for the Alphas with no luck and there's no sign of Newton. At last, the survivors have peace. Topic. Notes and plot holes Although there are numerous references to the ancient enemy, it is never specified what the ancient enemy is, a being, a place, or something else. Several points of evidence including Tay identifying him as such point to Billy as being the ancient enemy. However, at one point the Troika chant, We are the ancient enemy. Furthermore, it is not known who or what the ancient enemy is the enemy of. The sources of the various mutations are not known. Most are described as being a result of exposure to radiation, however, even some of the characters note that this is not an adequate explanation, some are subtle, while some are extreme compare the Troika to a lesser mutation like Edward's chameleon-like power to change the color of his skin. Some only become apparent after a time, Tate's mutation, the mouth, is only discovered over halfway through the series. Also, some of the characters seem to have unusual traits unrelated to the others. Examples include Kubrick, whose see-through skin is caused by Mother, and Billy, whose strange abilities also unexplained existed before the main events of the stories. The bodies of all the corpses of the Mayflower passengers vanish with no explanation. Eight missings are unaccounted for. Three become the Troika, and the others, called the Missing Five, are later revealed to be, somehow, alive within Billy. Although the moon, or any of the three parts it breaks into never impact Earth, Jobs and Mo watch the devastation unfold from orbit after manually releasing the Mayflower's solar sails, the Earth that the remnants return to has the moon embedded in its side. The book series has a few references to the Beatles, with one book being called Nowhere Land, a reference to the Beatles' song, Nowhere Man, and the villains of the Beatles' film Yellow Submarine are called Blue Meanies. In the summary for Nowhere Land, the remnants are described finding a power node, a green cone buzzing with electricity, when in fact this does not happen in the book. Although it is hinted at in No Place Like Home, the origin of the fire that burned Two-Face is never revealed. In Lost and Found, both Roger Dodger and D. Caff tell of having strange nightmares while being dead, but neither of their nightmares are ever revealed. In the Mayflower Project, it is described that those who enter the hibernation bays must swallow the end of a long tube that goes down their throat and put a plastic mask over their faces in order for the hibernation technology to function. These apparatuses are not mentioned, however, when the survivors are waking up in destination unknown. Topic. See also Simulated reality Simulated reality in fiction